Welcome to MSA TV News. I am reaching you live from the city of Lokoja, the Confluence State of Nigeria. I am Sherifat Onono Mohammed. The headlines: Kogi Governor Yahya Bello says access to quality health care cannot be overemphasized. Mali labels 49 detained Ivorian soldiers as mercenaries. And Eric Ten Hagen first tax as Man United takes on Liverpool in a pre-season friendly. Now the news in detail. The President Mohamed Buhari on Monday described his seven years in office as tough, saying he is eager to go. This was as he called on the striking academic staff union of universities to consider the plight of the future generations of the country as the strike stretches into the six months. He also said the halts on academic activities would have generational consequences on families, the educational system and future development of the country. According to a statement signed by his senior special assistant on media and publicity, Garba Shehu, the president said this while he received some governors of the All Progressive Congress, legislature and political leaders at his residence in Dara, Kassina State. The statement was titled, Enough is Enough. President Buhari tells Asu, urges lecturers to consider generational consequences, lamenting the toll his official duty had taken on him in the last seven years. Buhari told the visiting governors and political leaders that he had not been to his house in Dara for close to a year due to the demands of office. He said the observation that he abandoned his base was made by the Emir of Dara, Dr. Farouk Omar Farouk, at the Eid prayer ground. He held the microphone and told everyone that the last time he was in Dara was during the Eid al Kabir of 2021. The president explained that his schedule of work was much, saying he recently had to sympathize with the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Geoffrey Onyema, who had to be away most of the time from his family. He claimed that relative to the resources available and compared to the last administration, the government had done well in many areas, particularly in infrastructure. Continuing his tour of legacy projects in the state, Governor Yahaya Adoza Bello used the occasion of the Salah celebration to visit some projects in Nagasa and Ozuri. In the governor's entourage were the Honorable Commissioner for Environment, Victor Adewale Omofaye, as well as the project coordinator, Kogi Niuma, Barista Ladi Ahmed Jato, and other state government officials. Delighted at the quality of work done by the contractors, Governor Ayabelo charged member of the communities, Agasa and Ozuri, to jealously guard the legacy projects, as his administration had, through the instrumentality of Kogi Niumab, invested heavily in the Goli reclamation project in the community, which is expected to last for decades. He assures the people of Kogi State that medical tourism will be drastically reduced even across the nation, Nigeria. Governor Bello gave the assurance when he assessed the level of work done and medical equipment procured at the reference hospital in Okene. Our reporter has more. Kogi State Governor Yaya Bello says the state's reference hospital Okene, if completed, will significantly address medical tourism in the north central region and Nigeria at large. He noted that the medical tourism was draining the economy of the nation and that many lives were lost due to MET that could have been treated within the country. This is going to be one of its kind as far as Nigeria and even West Africa's sub-region is concerned in terms of health care delivery at tertiary level. That you don't need to go outside this country to seek for any medical assistance or help as far as human anatomy is concerned. He said that the comprehensive model, which is 95 completed, would effectively help to run all health facilities across the state and engage adequate manpower to handle the facilities. Now, in terms of management, if we can conceive an ambitious project like this, remember that we have um, a model that we are coming up with, whereby... The hospital is going to be self-sustaining, not necessarily depending on government. Of course, we will have to support it from takeoff and ensure that it stabilizes and be on auto cruise before we can hands off and then it continue to run itself in whatever decision we are going to take so that government does not lose, 
the people, it won't be too exorbitant for the people to afford. At the same time, it will be self-sustaining. Governor Bello assured the management that the government already have a model to keep the hospital safe, sustainable, and made affordable to Nigerians seeking advanced medical care. By the time we are completing the project, all the packages and the models we are going to use in running this hospital and several other ultra-modern general hospitals that we have built across the senatorial districts of the state we shall, will, be, will be ready and then it shall be commissioned very soon by the grace of God. If you have never suffered health challenges, you will know that health is wealth. So that is why myself and all of my team will come together and say, let's do something that will ensure that all this medical tourism, not only from Kogi State, not only from, the, from Nigeria, even from West Africa, will retain it back here. And of course, it's going to be a morning spinning uh, venture for our state by the special grace of God. And it will save money for these or those our big men that are flying to Dubai, London, Germany, or elsewhere to seek for medical you know, attention. Departments and units inspected amongst many are Control Center for Technical Squad, Emergency and Intensive Care Unit, Automology Consulting Rooms with High Intensive Unit, Maternity Wards and Operation Theaters, Antinata Clinic and Nonata ICU. Others are Diagnosis Unit, Computer, Tomography Scan, CT Scan, Machine, described to be the best in Nigeria, Administrative Office, Meeting and Seminar Halls. Reference Hospital is designed with various wings from the first floor to the third floor, with many consulting rooms. The 300 bed space Kogi Reference Hospital is going to be the best of all kinds and we have the capacity to serve the people of Kogi and Nigeria at large. Earlier, Governor Bello stopped over to inspect the 100-bed mother and child clinic in Ege, a Davi local government area, facilitated by the federal government through the Sustainable Development Goals, SDGs. Faith Abdul Ghaffar reporting for MLC TV News. Campaign against thuggery and violence in Ebira Group organized a one-day sensitization workshop to encourage you to shun anything capable of causing disharmony in the society. The group further caution against political thuggery. The seminar, which was held in Okene, has traditional rulers and community leaders, including youth, in attendance. Our reporter has more. The group campaign against thuggery and violence in Ebira has promised to move from house to house to encourage youths to be good ambassadors in society. The convener, Abdurazak Maman, further challenged young adults to engage in anything meaningful to benefit their lives. It's our duty to conscientize ourselves. It is our duty to strengthen the loopholes among ourselves. It is our duty to look inwardly who and who that has the tendency to cause violence here and redefine that tendency, if possible. In the case where we, we could not do our, it beyond our capacity, we are going to talk to the appropriate authority to ensure justice, to ensure peace, to ensure tranquility, that our four forefathers, their eyes slit, their two eyes closed. So that is the mandate here. We are here today to pick peace, we are here to talk to ourselves, we are here today to re energize all the youth across the board to prevent further breakdown of what law and order. Election of war. The guest speaker, Ambassador Samuel Samson, lecturer at the Nigerian Defense Academy, urged youths to learn new skills to fit into a developing society like Kogi. After the elections, nobody calls it because it becomes a threat, a security threat to the winner of the election. So what I'm saying here is that every youth should go and develop themselves, more especially now that Kogi State is part of the oil and gas producing state. Kogi State youth should go and get skills in crane operations, in forklift operations, oil field rigging, industrial scaffolding, health, safety and environment, and the rest. By so doing, because the companies that are in this land, a lot of oil companies that are in and around this area are employing people that are from other states. Why? 
The requisite skills needed to enroot the company, the people from this state doesn't have. Jude Sule, who is a politician, commended the organizers and said the seminar was timely. It is a good innovation and a well-articulated arrangement by the youth. But because of the personalities involved in this, I am sure there's going to be change. I am sure positive will come out of this because those that are doing this campaign are those that are directly involved in the violence. They have tested the bitter effect of violence and they are giving up. They are saying no to violence. And ours is to give support and ensure that we record success at the end of the day. Traditional leaders and dignitaries in the society were in attendance. Reports compiled by Abdul Mutalib Dauda. I am Matthias Ayodeji Peter, MLC TV, Okeni. We go on a short break. We'll be right back. Malachi TV Online is here. For your timely and reliable news that reaches you fast with the breaking news, choose MLC TV. Get human interest stories right here on MLC TV with entertainment, sports, business, culture, tourism, and fashion news stories all featured on MLC TV. Not forgetting political and current affairs news, state and federal government and people's matters will be discussed regularly on MLC TV. MLC TV, your one-stop online destination for unbiased, accurate news, entrepreneur ideas and youth matters to the rest of the world. MLC TV, reaching everywhere, informing everyone. Welcome back. And on foreign, the military government in Mali has declared that 49 soldiers from Ivory Coast who were detained at the airport in Bamako when they arrived on Sunday were mercenaries. However, the United Nations peacekeeping mission in Mali, MINUSMA, said the men were part of a unit that provided routine logistical support to the Ivorian military contingent of MINUSMA. The government in Mali says the case will be referred to the judicial authorities. A local journalist told the BBC that Mali's military government, which has promised to restore civilian rule, has had a troubled relationship with the UN. Let's join Jonah Malik for the sports updates. And on sports update, new Manchester United manager Eric Ten Hag has confirmed that Harry Maguire remains as the club's captain. Ten Hag also clarified that Cristiano Ronaldo is in his plans for the new season while fielding a number of questions on the striker's future. Ten Hag also spoke at his first press conference of Tour 2022 to preview Tuesday's match against Liverpool at Bangkok's Raja Mangala Stadium. Meanwhile, Ten Hang will have his first test as a new Manchester United manager in a friendly preseason match against Liverpool on Tuesday in Bangkok. And that's sports update on MLC TV News. I am Malik Jonah reporting. Back to Acasta for more stories. Thank you, Jonah. And on entertainment news, Matthias Ayodeji Peter is standing by. On our entertainment news, Nollywood actress Funke Akidele has officially been named as the deputy governorship candidate under the People's Democratic Party (PDP). The movie star made the announcement known via her Instagram page on Tuesday, July 12, 2022. Akinele says she decided to accept the mandate to help women and improve the well-being of youths and the girl child. The movie star said she will be putting her bubbling acting career on hold for the purpose of the new part. It will be recalled that the spokesman for the governorship candidate had announced Akindele as one of the five persons nominated as Adidiron's running mate. 
As it stands now, Akindele will be the running mate of the People's Democratic Party Lagos State Governorship candidate, Olajide Adediron, popularly called Jandor. The movie star is a trained lawyer with an acting career spanning over two decades. She was married to music veteran JJC Skills and they have a set of twins together. Still on our entertainment news from Africa, South African actress Busi Lurai has passed away from an unknown cause. The award-winning actress and star of Netflix comedy How to Ruin Christmas, The Wedding, was found dead at a residence on Sunday 10, according to her agency, iMedia Artist. Before Lurai's tragic passing, Netflix had announced that season 3 of the hit comedy series How to Ruin Christmas, The Baby Shower, was in post-production in time for its end-of-the-year debut. On the 2020 show, the actress starred in the lead role as Tumi Sello, a prodigal daughter who makes a U-turn and visits her family for her sister's wedding after years of being away. Her return sparks a number of chaotic events, which nearly ruins the family wedding. In addition to her Netflix original features, Lurai has starred in a number of notable roles, including South African sitcom City Selas. And that is all in entertainment since today. My name is Matthias Ayodiji Peter. Thank you, Matthias, for the update. And that's the size of our package today. Join us tomorrow at this same hour to watch our news as we give you updates on happenings within and across the globe. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Malikai TV. Like and follow our Facebook page, MLC TV. Instagram, MLC TV 2021. Twitter at MLC TV 1. For your event coverage, information, contribution, advert and sponsorship, please call any of our numbers displayed on your screen. It's Malakai TV, reaching everywhere, informing everyone. I am Sharifat Ununu Mohammed. Please continue to be your brother's keeper to build a united and peaceful society together. Good day and thanks for watching.